الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وعن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا حلوة خضرة وإن الله مستخلفكم فيها فينظر كيف تعملون فاتقوا الدنيا واتقوا النساء فإن أول فتنة بني إسرائيل كانت في النساء رواه مسلم ما دي ريسبكتد brothers and elders and listeners the hadith that I have recited continuing with the same subject and topic from the previous durus before is in the heading and the chapter of Kitab nikah in the book of marriage and inshallah soon we'll come to know how it's related to the topic of marriage because part of the hadith, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions about dunya, about the worldly life. So if we look at the ahadith of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're not very long, two lines, three lines, four lines, some are very short. Not many ahadith that are long. So the message of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was short, but it was comprehensive, it would cover everything. So from this hadith also, it's a short hadith, it's only two lines, but it's very comprehensive and covers many things. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us a picture of what the dunya, the worldly life is. The narrator of the hadith is, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu an He narrated that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the world is sweet and green. So living in this dunya, in a, the worldly life that we look, it seems though it's sweet. When we have something sweet, it's very tasty for the tongue. But at times what happens, it can be very harmful for the body. But we still want this again and again. We want to eat sweet, sugary things. We want it again and again, but it's tasteful for the tongue, but it can harm the body. And that second is green, part of human nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made human. We like greenery, we like things to look nice. So this is how the dunya seemingly is, that it looks really nice. The properties, the houses, the cars, the gold, the silver, the clothes, everything looks nice. Just like when we look at something green, greenery, it, look, it looks very nice for the eyes. And we could stay there for such a long time just looking at this. So this is how the dunya is. But the reality is that it's going to perish and be destroyed one day. That is the reality. وَإِنَّ اللَّهِ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you a khalif, an atony in it. He watches you how you act. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us in the dunya as a deputy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us duties that we have to fulfill in the dunya. And then Allah's, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that Allah is watching you how you fulfill these duties. Or the other meaning of the hadith the muhaddisin mentioned is 
that that you are the deputy or a khalif that someone before us that could be a family member they had passed away now all the wealth that they have it comes to us so Allah is saying that look we have given you all this and now we're watching what actions are you going to do with this are you going to use it in a lawful way are you going to use it in an unlawful way are you going to use it to please me or are you going to use it to displease me so this is another meaning that muhaddisin have mentioned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentions that look Allah is watching what actions you're doing in the dunya then the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that the world is like sweet it's like green and then what happens two things that are deadly poisonous and very very dangerous that we can be trapped in the dunya in the worldly life so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam highlighted these two things which are very dangerous the first one is fattaqu dunya that save yourself protect yourself so you are not trapped in the dunya if we look the companions did business also allah's mentioned this in the quran in surah nur rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah the companions lived a life also so having a business and living a worldly life this is totally normal and there's no objections against this and neither the sharia says this so we know from the lives of the sahabas they did business also so now in the hadith the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioning that be careful watchful mindful that you don't get trapped into the dunya what happens when a person gets trapped they stuck they want to do good things but they cannot how many people do we hear they say we want to come to the masjid we want to do things but we cannot we're trapped in the dunya there's too many things i'm stuck in one place i don't have any replacement I, i'm only the person that can be there because of this they're losing their prayer inside the masjid because of this some might even miss their jumu'ah prayer because of this many things they're trapped so this is something that we have to be mindful of that we have to work we have to do everything but we should not be trapped when it's time to come to the masjid we come to the masjid when it's time to come and pray we pray if we're trapped in a way where we're working or half the night and now when it comes to fajr prayer we're missing fajr prayer by allah you could have earned 3000 pound overnight <laughs> but if you miss your fajr prayer the loss of missing that fajr prayer is billion no number can be mentioned more loss so if we're trapped and then because of this work we lo- we don't have enough sleep to wake up for fajr then this is dunya we're captured in the dunya if it's because of dunya we're doing other things work then is stopping us from deen and the work of deen then we're trapped so this is the first thing that living in this worldly life that we should not be trapped just like the sahabas that tijara and business did not deprive them make that make them uh neglectful of the remembrance of Allah the second thing is what the nisa be watchful of women ladies fa inna awwala fitnati bani israil kanat fi nisa the first fitna the first trial that took for the um bani israil was through women so let's look at uh, being married first so this is related to the topic because it's coming the chapter of nikah because allah has put this in a man's nature the love for the woman and then this love what happens it changes where a person he may, it could be his wife that he wouldn't do things uh, for his wife so will this love take one to what if a wife wants so uh, so things but we cannot afford them so will this love take a person to do unlawful things earn money in an unlawful way earn money do haram things 
turn to things or work such an extent where it's affecting his deen. If this is the case and we're doing it, then we're stuck in this fitna also. Or the second is that if a person that's not married and they get trapped into the love of a woman and now they're doing zina of the eyes, zina of the hands and then zina in itself. All this, this is a big fitna. And it was the first trial for the Bani Israel. Now there was a man called <laughs> Bal'am ibn Ba'ura in, and he was in the time of Musa alayhi salam. And he was a scholar at the time and there was something unique about him that his prayers, his du'as used to be answered. Because he knew some of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would make du'a, the du'a would be accepted. Now, Musa alayhi salam came along with the Bani Israel and they were in Syria and they, they were getting ready to prepare to fight. So his people, they said to him that you, because your du'as are answered, make du'a against this Prophet of Allah. Na'udhu billahi min He said, how can I ever do this? He's a Prophet of Allah. Allah will destroy me, my dunya and akhirah. But they insisted. They insisted and they took a lot of gifts to him. And he said, okay, whatever I do, I always do istikhara first. He did istikhara. And in his istikhara, it came negative that he should not even think about doing such a thing against the Prophet of Allah. But then, the love, what happened, these gifts and other things, because of this and his, the pressure of his people, he got ready. And while he was on his donkey and making this way to make dua against him, na'udhu billah, what happened, even the donkey was struggling and fell down to the ground giving him a sign that do not do this, but he still went and he tried the words that he tried saying against uh, Musa salam and his nation. Allah made the words of his own nation that he made dua against his own nation that they be destroyed. But then he had mentioned to them that this is what has happened and I cannot say, uh, I tried to say the nation of Musa salam, but it could not happen. Then he gave them a trick that the only way that you can defeat the Bani Israel is that get your ladies and make them like saleswomen. They'll go out and they'll sell things and they should present themselves in such a way that if a man from the Bani Israel is interested in them, then they should give themselves to that man. So this is what they had done and he had told them to do this. And now they had managed to cap the chief of the Bani Israel. So when they uh, captured the chief, the lady came and then she had agreed to this. So he went to Musa salam and said, that, are you saying this lady is unlawful for me? Musa salam said, indeed. But he said, I will not listen. And he went in a tent, na'udhu billah, and then he had done zina. So now this is when Allah's punishment came upon them. And 70,000 of them were finished. Then Harun alayhi salam went and they had destroyed this person and immediately Allah's punishment stopped. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned that the first trial for the Bani Israel was through women. This is also a trial. It could be a trial when you're married where you think I'm not bothered about my earnings if it's halal or haram but I want to fulfill the desire of my wife. Or the other thing, a person where you can say like girlfriends talking to girls, how many t people, how much time do they waste in this, years they waste in this investment and money that they waste in this and then they realize after 10 years that they could, they, people, they give up their studies in universities, two years, three years, that they were there, two years, they're given up, why? Because they've fallen in love. How many people have lost so many things? because of this. So it's a big fitna. Two things the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, be careful and mindful of. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us the ability to understand. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yusifun Wa Salamun Ala Al-Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Bil Alameen.